We're happy to have today as our speaker, uh, Lu Wan from Wajong University of Science and Technology, uh, or HUST, as it is universally known in Wuhan. Let's see, Lu received her PhD from uh, Peking University, but I should add she spent two years as a visiting researcher in the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory, and actually, did, I think, did most of her work there with T.S. Hong, who many of you know. And uh, then she was a postdoc in, in Korea in our theory center, and then she joined the faculty of HUST in, what is it, the School of Electrical Engineering <laughs> and the JTEX lab. Uh, where she's now a professor, and she's won several awards for her work in, you know, in the Asian Physical Society, and has had many students, and today she's going to tell us about zonal flow generation in systems that don't conserve PV, which is different what we, from what we usually hear about. So. Thank you. Now, let me begin. Uh, here is the motivation of our work. Uh, as you know, the zonal flow generation is very ubiquitous uh, phenomena, including in planet or in our laboratory plasmas. So, uh, Today, I'm going to talk about the zonal flow generation. Here is the outline of my talk. I will firstly introduce the PV dynamics in both GFD and magnetized plasmas. And I will also talk about the PV conservation and the zonal flow generation in 2D system. And then I will move on to the PV non-conservation and zonal flow generation in 3D system, and uh, also uh, talk about the zonal flow generation by nonlinear flux. Finally, is the summary and discussions. Okay, now let's uh, look at the uh, geostrophic equation. Uh, here is the momentum equation. Um, actually, um, the we we have seen this uh, from yesterday's talk. Uh, actually, for lower Rossby number, we can get this kind of geostrophic balance to get this uh, velocity. It is actually a two D dynamics. Then we can get uh, this operation on the momentum equation to get the this uh, vorticity equation, including both the relative vorticity and the planetary uh, vorticity. So from here we can see the uh, potential vorticity, including both of them, is conserved. Uh, from the global point of view, we, we can also uh, look at the PV conservation from the Kelvin's circulation theorem for the rotating system like, uh, like this. Actually, from the PV conservation, we can see that the, um, the change of the vorticity can be related to the uh, displacement on the beta plane uh, in this way. Uh, we can also rewritten in uh, the PV conservation in this way. You can see clearly from here the change in vorticity can result in the latitudinal displacement. And uh, <clears throat> If we linearize the PV conservation equation, then we can get the Rossby wave dispersion relationship like this. Here, uh, this omega is uh, the real frequency rather than the vorticity. 
Uh, sorry about the bad notation here. Uh, then, uh, very similarly, uh, in plasmas, we also have uh, this similar uh, story. Um, similar to the Rossby wave, we have the drift wave in plasmas. Um, here is the Hasegawa Wakatani model, which is the simplest model for drift wave, uh, which can uh, be obtained from um, like this. Here is the drift velocity, including both the E cross B uh, drift velocity and the polarization drift velocity. And uh, then here is the uh, perpendicular current and the parallel uh, current, um, then we can uh, use the divergence free of the current to get the vorticity equation like this. And uh, combined with the continuity equation, we can get the density evolution equation like this. And uh, then if we combine two of them, uh, and in the implicit limit, we can also get the potential vorticity conservation equation like this, which is very similar to the uh, GFD system. Um, if we further consider the small inertia limit, um, which is also referred as uh, Boltzmann electrons, or uh, adiabatic electrons due to the smallest. Uh, so in this limit, we can get this uh, relationship, the adiabatic response of the density to the electric potential like this. Then uh, the parallel dependence uh, vanishes, which is uh, 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 resembled to the 2D system. Uh, the, then the hasegawa wakatani equation will reduce to the hasegawa mima equation uh, like this. And if we linearize the uh, hasegawa mima equation, then we can get the drift wave dispersion relationship like this, which is again uh, very similar to the Rossby wave dispersion relationship. Okay, um, now uh, let's look at uh, the relationship between the PV conservation and the zonal flow generation. Here on the left, uh, which is the uh, zonal flow from, uh, gen generated from Rossby wave turbulence uh, like this, and here is the uh, zonal flow generation from the drift wave turbulence, uh, which are very similar. Uh, and then by using the Taylor identity, we can see that the Reynolds force can be written in terms of the vorticity flux or uh, actually PV flux or vorticity flux. Anyway, um, the PV flux is, is related to zonal flow generation for both of these uh, systems. Um, and uh, then if we look at the uh, potential isotropy equation, uh, we can get these two equations uh, for Rossby wave turbulence and uh, this one is for drift wave turbulence. We can see that uh, the turbulence spreading term uh, is uh, related to uh, this uh, problem. Uh, here you can see the turbulence spreading can um, be related to the uh, flux, vorticity flux or um, PV flux. <coughs> now if we combine the 
uh, potential anisotropy equation and the zonal flow evolution <laughs> equation, then uh, you can see here the momentum conservation uh, equation can be obtained, which is proposed by uh, Diamond in 2008 paper like this. This is uh, again for Rossby wave turbulence and this is for drift wave turbulence. Anyway, from here you can see that um, this kind of uh, system cannot accelerate or sustain zonal flow with stationary turbulence if um, these guys uh, di disappeared and uh, uh, if in the absence of P potential anisotropy flux or false driving or dissipation. It, it is uh, referred as Charlie Jijin non-acceleration theorem. Um, so you can see here um, the potential vorticity conservation um, plays a What's the hidden symmetry corresponding to uh, PV conservation? Um, I learned this from uh, the theory festival in Axon Provence. Um, Professor Brish uh, gave a lecture there. Um, from his lecture, I learned that the hidden symmetry is uh, called relabeling uh, symmetry, which means that the, si the system dynamics uh, don't change by relabeling transformation of fluid particle Lagrangian markers. So this is uh, the PV conservation and the underlying uh, symmetry. Now here, uh, this table shows you uh, the Charlie Jijin non acceleration momentum theorem in 2D PV conserved system. This column is uh, the Rossby wave in GFD, and uh, this column is uh, the drift wave in magnetized plasmas. Um, in both of this uh, system is a uh, 2D system, and uh, uh, PV is controlled here, and uh, the uh, zonal flow generation can be related to the uh, change of the vorticity of PV, or potential vorticity. Um, and uh, the zonal momentum is conserved as well for both of these um, 2D systems. And uh, then uh, I'm going to talk about uh, what happens if the PV is not conserved. So that's the, the PV non-conservation and zonal flow generation in 3D system. Um, well, talking about the 3D system, that generalize the Hasegawa Mima equation by including the, uh, the third direction, which is uh, like this. This is the ion uh, momentum equation in parallel direction. Parallel means uh, um, the direction along the magnetic field line, and the 2D direction is uh, perpendicular to the magnetic field line. Uh, so when they include the ion momentum um, equation in the, perpen in, in the parallel direction, then correspondingly the uh, potential vorticity equation um, is modified by including this term, which is uh, the, ion, uh, the ion parallel compression term, because uh, it, the density, uh, in the density equation, yeah, there is uh, the parallel compression term. Um, so from here, you can see that 
due to the presence of this parallel compression, you can see that the uh, potential voltage is not conserved anymore. So um, this term actually physically uh, it can be related to the ion acoustic wave, um, but I'm not going to talk too much detail about uh, the ion acoustic wave. But anyway, you can just uh, uh, think um, this uh, parallel compression can break the symmetry. Yes. Um, there is actually, if you include the pressure equation, you could construct the potential vorticity, including the effect of pressure, uh, which would be conserved. So there is some general, generalized version of potential vorticity, which could still be conserved in the system. Um, but here, I didn't add uh, the ion pressure. But uh, uh, here, it, it is still cold ion limit. But I just add the parallel direction, the ion acoustic wave, which is only need um, finite electron temperature. That is uh, enough. Um, by including the um, ion pressure, uh, I'm looking at that problem now, okay. actually. You can <laughs> yeah. discuss it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> OK, now you can see the PV uh, conservation is broken, then uh, from this uh, potential vorticity equation, we can also get the potential anisotropy equation. It is modified uh, like this. You can see there is one more term uh, coming in, uh, which is uh, like this. Um, on the right hand side, you can see this term is uh, just the PV flux, which is uh, already there for 2D system. Uh, of course, this PV flux can be related to the Reynolds stress, and then it can drive the zonal flow, right? But uh, this new term is uh, just the coupling between the uh, drift wave, which is in the perpendicular direction, and the ion acoustic wave, which is in the parallel direction. So this term um, will um, also drive the zonal flow. So that's the uh, this uh, momentum equation, which is also uh, combined the zonal flow. Um, evolution equation and the potential anisotropic equation, uh, you can see all these terms are the same as the 2D case, uh, but uh, for this term, which is uh, induced by the uh, perpendicular and uh, parallel uh, coupling, uh, actually you can see from here, this term can play a role as a turbulent acceleration. Uh, and uh, then I want to say uh, is uh, this term can be, um, how to say, calculated from the quasi-linear theory like this. Um, you, you can see from the expression here, um, the turbulence uh, asymmetric spectrum is not required to get the non-zero uh, drive, which is uh, different from the 2D case. Because uh, usually, in 2D case, the uh, Reynolds force requires a symmetry spectrum like this. If you don't have the turbulence uh, asymmetry, this uh, Reynolds uh, stress will uh, disappear, right? So um, this is the key difference between uh, 3D drive and the 2D drive. And then uh, we also compare the order of magnitude of the 3D drive and the 2D drive like this. Uh, you can see that for uh, 3D ordering, we can see that they are uh, comparable with each other. 
So it means that this kind of uh, 3D drive um, can be important for the zone of load generation. And then uh, we can see for the stationary state, uh, as I mentioned before, um, in 2D system, the, for the stationary state, the, the zone of flow cannot be sustained uh, if there is no uh, flux forcing or dissipation like this. Um, but in 3D system, we can see that the zone of flow can be accelerated or sustained by the new coupling term. Uh, which is induced by the uh, drift wave and ion acoustic coupling. And uh, then uh, here uh, I summarized the, the key um, difference between the 2D system and the 3D system you can see here. Uh, at first, uh, the parallel uh, direction, the ordering is different. This ordering makes uh, the 3D can comes in. And uh, for PV, for potential vorticity, it is conserved in 2D system, but uh, not in 3D system. And uh, because in 3D system, the potential vorticity um, is not conserved, or the, like, let's say, the symmetry breaking is happened in the governing equation. Then uh, when they look at the zone of flow uh, driving, we don't need the symmetry uh, breaking in the turbulence spectrum. So then uh, we call this kind of symmetry breaking as a dynamical symmetry breaking. But uh, for 2D system, the PV is conserved or the system is, is symmetric, symmetric, but for the um, solution or the turbulence spectrum, we need a symmetry, a, a symmetry solution. So then this kind of symmetry breaking is called spontaneous symmetry breaking. So this is the key difference between the 2D system and the 3D system. Now, uh, let me move on to the zone of flow generation by nonlinear flux. Uh, nonlinear flux means um, here, um, because in uh, plasmas, um, when they talk about uh, the uh, momentum flux, which is uh, that's uh, focus on the Poloidal direction, poro, um, which is also the zonal direction. Okay, um, the momentum flux um, is related to not only the velocity but also the density. So um, the total poloidal momentum flux can be decomposed into uh, three parts, including Reynolds stress and uh, the particle flux induced convection. And uh, the third term is the uh, nonlinear flux, which is a uh, triplet coupling between the velocity and the density. Nonlinear flux is a crucial ingredient of the, the, the momentum flux, which can be driven by this uh, triplet coupling and uh, it is, can be also related to turbulence spreading. Uh, and uh, in tokamak um, plasmas, um, usually it is of uh, potential relevant for uh, strongly turbulent uh, edge plasmas because usually in tokamak edge, um, the turbulence is uh, very strong or the amplitude is uh, relatively high in the edge region. So um, theoretical study on this nonlinear momentum flux and its effect on uh, poloidal, gener poloidal flow generation is uh, necessary. So um, 
I will look at this problem. Um, before going into the detail, I will talk about uh, the uh, a key parameter for um, for, for turbulence, um, which is called uh, Kubo number. Kubo number is defined as the ratio of the autocorrelation time to the added turnover time. Um, if the Kubo number is uh, much less than one, uh, then the uh, quasi-linear theory can be applied. Um, but uh, when the Kubo number is greater than one of the order of one, um, the quasi-particle will be trapped in the wave. In this case, uh, the quasi-linear theory is not applicable. Um, then we have to go to the nonlinear theory. So to look at this problem, we also start from the uh, electrostatic drift wave model. Um, it is uh, the Hasegawa Mima equation, which is widely used. Actually, I have mentioned before. Um, here on the right hand side, this is the nonlinear coupling term. Uh, here we consider two uh, spatial scales. One is fast spatial scales, like this, and the other is uh, slow spatial scales, uh, which is like this. And to sh show this two spatial scales, here is the cartoon. Um, you can see this uh, fast oscillation is the uh, small spatial scale, like this, and uh, this uh, envelope, the scale of this envelope is the slow radial uh, variation uh, scale. Then, um, for the nonlinear uh, polar momentum flux, we can uh, write it in this way. Here, the upper script C uh, representing the coherent component of the nonlinear response, which means that the, uh, it is from um, bit mode. And uh, for the density, uh, we consider the adiabatic response, which means that the density response to the uh, electric potential uh, adiabatically. And uh, then for the coherent component of uh, nonlinear response, we have to calculate it from the hasegawa mima equation. And here the key point is how to calculate this coherent nonlinear response. Um, we use the adidamped quasi-normal Markovian theorem theory that this, the nonlinear coupling term can be decomposed into nonlinear damping and uh, uh, fast fluctuating force and uh, um, this particular set, we just uh, pick up uh, a particular set like this, um, but uh, this does not change the nonlinear damping rate due to uh, their the, the number of the moles uh, is quite large. Then um, from here we can get the coherent component um, from this Hasegawa Mima equation, putting this here to get the coherent component. After getting the uh, coherent component and then put it into the nonlinear momentum flux, then we can get uh, this equation here. You can see that the fourth order moment has been factored into a product of second order moment like this. And uh, if you look at one of them, it is two time correlation. So then we need to uh, 
calculate this two time correlation in terms of one time correlation back days. And uh, then uh, putting the one time correlation into here, we can get the nonlinear momentum flux back days. Okay, here uh, there is uh, the child interaction time, which is a uh, uh, P to determine the nonlinear coupling coefficient. Um, this interaction time can be written in terms like this. Here, gamma is the nonlinear damping rate, and uh, here, uh, this guy is the frequency mismatch. To calculate the, the interaction time, we need a closure model. Uh, we can calculate the correlation time uh, from this uh, closure model, like this. Um, from here, actually, uh, we can consider both uh, the weak turbulence limit or the strong turbulence limit. But here, um, since we consider in the tokamak edge regime, this turbulence is quite strong, so we consider this strong turbulence limit, which means that the linear damping rate is much, much greater than the frequency uh, mismatch. So from here, we can get the inverse of the correlation time that days, uh, just to estimate that days. Uh, from here, you can again um, get the Kubo, Kubo number is the order of unity like this, uh, which it means that um, the um, limit we consider is agreement with uh, previous uh, argument. Now we, can, we have already got all of the essential uh, expressions for this nonlinear momentum flux. Um, uh, I just uh, show you uh, that this. Um, from this expression, uh, you can also uh, see that for this nonlinear momentum flux, again, a symmetric turbulence spectrum is not required. So, um, which is uh, different from the uh, Reynolds force or the PV flux, as I mentioned before. Here, the asymmetric spectrum is required, right? So, this is the difference between the nonlinear uh, flux and the quasi linear flux. Then, uh, I'm going to estimate the nonlinear force. Uh, and then compare the nonlinear force to the quasi-linear force. Um, here is just uh, the typical parameters for uh, tokamak edge turbulence. By using this kind of uh, parameters, we can estimate the uh, quasi-linear force and the nonlinear force. You can see that um, Although, yeah, the nonlinear force is a little bit smaller than the quasi-linear one, but uh, they are in the same order. So, um, it means that the nonlinear uh, force driving zonal flow is uh, important in the tokamak edge plasmas. Okay. So now uh, let me just uh, summarize of my talk. Uh, here I showed you um, two cases. One is the uh, for the three D system, the P potential vorticity is not conserved, and uh, it can uh, drive zonal flow. Um, and uh, another case is uh, the nonlinear momentum flux drive the uh, zonal flow. Uh, I'm not 
uh, repeat again. But uh, I want to stress uh, one point, which is uh, asymmetry uh, breaking. I think um, this physics is very important for uh, this for the zone of flow generation or for other um, coherent structures uh, formation. I think. And uh, for discussions, uh, actually, I'm considering um, modification of the Hasegawa Mima equation by including the finite Lama radius effect. Uh, for this case, we need to add the ion pressure equation, uh, as uh, Oscar has asked. Um, for this system, uh, I looked at the conservation laws. Um, at first, the potential vorticity is conserved. And uh, uh, also, we can get the energy uh, conservation. But uh, for the usual potential isotropy, if we um, don't modify the definition of the potential isotropy, uh, then the potential isotropy may not be conserved. Uh, I just uh, look at this uh, this week. I, from the preliminary results, I see the potential isotropy is not conserved. Um, uh, next uh, step, I'm also going to look at the zonal uh, momentum theorem and uh, to look at how it is related to the diamagnetic Reynolds stress, um, etc. Actually, in this work, um, they already um, done something about the diamagnetic Reynolds stress uh, driving zone flow. I want to look at the relationship between um, them. So that's it. Thank you for your attention. So, questions, discussion, ladies and gentlemen. Oscar? Um, it looks like both of the additional terms you put into your colloidal momentum mm -hmm. flux uh, that are different from the reign of stress are related to density fluctuations in some sense. Right? One is the particle uh -huh. flux multiplied by V theta. Uh -huh. The other is the three correlation involving the density. Yes. As well. So how do you, I mean, first of all, would you really drive <coughs> zonal flows and not zonal momentum or something like that with these? And also, is there a possibility of balancing these two terms? Balancing which one? The particle flux and what you call the nonlinear flux, so that the zone of flows. Oh, you, you mean this guy? Yeah, so particle flux uh -huh. and the nonlinear flux, for example. Oh, uh, here I didn't calculate uh, this guy, but uh, um, if we consider the adiabatic case, uh, there is no particle flux. Yeah, so um, because in this case we consider the adiabatic limit, so I think maybe we don't have to yeah, but, compare two of them. But your gamma would go to zero, then you don't have nonlinear flux, right? Do you have nonlinear flux in the adiabatic limit? Yes, we have. Oh. <coughs> because when we, uh, you can see from here, when you calculate the co coherent term, um, it will, uh, yeah, here, comes to that this way. So uh, you can see it is the correlation like this. So we can get the zero nonlinear flux. Yeah, but your gammas would vanish in the adiabatic limit, right? So your gamma linears. So then you only rely on resonance 
manifold, which is like a wave wave interaction picture. It's not clear to me that you would get. Mm -hmm. What what do you mean gamma nonlinear? Gamma linear? No no gamma oh. linear would vanish right in the adiabatic limit. Okay maybe. Oh you mean the linear growth rate? Yes yes. Oh okay but but for this case we uh, just consider a kind of uh, how to say this saturated state. We only have uh, the turbulence but not uh, in the linear stage. But it's difficult. I mean, if it's difficult to imagine in the adiabatic limit you have this strong turbulence. To me, adiabatic limit is more like wave turbulence. But it's okay. I mean, we can discuss this in more detail okay. because these are very <laughs> details about the calculation. Stir it, of course. Yeah, you could stir it. Yes. Anyone else? Well, I'll ask one while people are thinking. So, have you? You know, the question of the parallel compression driven zonal flow. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about the implications of that for intrinsic rotation? Uh, in particular, uh, we had a talk on intrinsic rotation from Oscar a week or two ago. And, you know, the, 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 our friend, the residual stress came out. And that involves, of course, usually both some direction in k parallel and the e cross b shear, the two being related. But here you would get the e cross b shear directly related to the, you know, the basically the orientation of div parallel v parallel. Mm -hmm. And then if you propagate that through into the rotation, that's going to, it, in some sense, it's going to change the relation <coughs> between the intrinsic rotation and kind of the Q profile and things like that that you usually get, right? Mm -hmm. In other words, why, why does the intrinsic rotation usually go, in, for example, in co direction is related to all of that? Mm -hmm. have, you thought, I mean, it would, it, it, have you thought about that at all? Because it, it would give kind of a different feedback loop between the shearing and the intrinsic rotation. Mm -hmm. I haven't, uh, yeah. The quick answer is I, I haven't thought about that, but uh, the e for the how to say the toroidal uh, intrinsic rotation usually we did consider the parallel force. Yeah, we, we, yeah. we, we don't usually. Remember this. This. I, there's the toroidal mm -hmm. Reynolds stress or parallel, you mm -hmm. know, the VR, you know, and but then, then you need the shear to uh -huh. break the symmetry. But in this case, mm -hmm. the shear would be directly related to the parallel dynamics, mm -hmm. which is different from the usual case. So it's going, it could change mm -hmm. the kind of the structure of the overall, you know, uh, in, intrinsic torque. I, I didn't quite get your idea. Uh, for the usual parallel uh, Reynolds uh, stress, it is like we are we you, or you you are you parallel, right? Something like that. Yeah. When we calculate the perturbation of U parallel, we need this equation. But we usually don't use in in we don't use the the effect of the parallel compression on the shear. Oh, you, you mean oh, from this? We, yes, exactly. Oh, I see. Got it. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, maybe we can it, it would, yeah, look it, at it. It would that. change. I mean, one, you know, it's a question, is that the significant driver? But it would change the familiar story quite clearly. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Which could be testable, you know. Mm -hmm. in, 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 yeah, usually, in, yeah, we get we we didn't consider this one, right? right. Only consider the first step. Yes. yes. Any other questions, David? Can I ask a very high level or possibly low level question? I'm not sure what it is. So at the beginning, you had an exact analog between Hasegawa Mima and Charney. Mm -hmm. Then you went off into this parallel compression mm -hmm. extension. Plasma system. Is there any 
analog in a fluid system? Uh, to get the extension to parallel to yeah. this way? Yeah. Is there anything uh -huh. one could think of in a fluid dynamical context? Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm not familiar with the, uh, how to say, the fluid uh, field. But uh, maybe if, for example, the body shallow or water wave, if you consider it's not shallow enough, we can if the other how to say direction uh, is important. I think this uh, kind of story may make difference. If you don't just consider a plane rather than um, considering the third direction, then PV is not conserved. And then the story is changed. That's all the agree with. Yeah. And could I speculate, suppose you had a, rot a rapidly rotating fluid and you allowed compressive squirting in the direction of rotation. Yeah. Right. Can you do anything in like reduced MH2? Oh yeah, I mean, you mean put parallel flows and reduce them? Absolutely. I mean, there's, there's versions of not so reduced MHD, if you know, that do that. There's a paper by Strauss, uh, circa 1980, after his uh, yeah. 76 thing that, that adds the parallel flow and compression and reduced MHD. Yeah, but mathematically, the, the equations, is there, is there an, an analogy? Again. I mean, I know there's a loose analogy, but, yes. but, but at the beginning you had an exact analogy, right? I mean, the equations are the same. I'd go down the road of something, a rapid rotation and compressive squirting along the direction of rotation. That would be my suggestion. Yusuke. So um, I, I was interested in your part on the nonlinear flux. Mm -hmm. And you showed that like if you look at this strong, strongly turbulent regimes, this triplet term can be comparable to quasi-linear flux and they can accelerate the flow. Yeah. And um, if they play a role, maybe this triplet term might accelerate flow in one location. But this triplet term introduces the spatial propagation of the fluctuations or momentums. So they, they can have some impact on the acceleration at the different <coughs> locations. So you might have a acceleration of the flows in the multiple locations in space, and this triplet term might play a role to um, introduce some layering mechanisms. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it a fair view? <laughs> you want to say the, it's a kind of non-local? Right. Uh, Here, um, I don't know, I'm not, yeah, how? I mean, I guess like in the tokamax, in the edge uh -huh. regions, you might have one or two steps with these flows, mm -hmm. like a staircases, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yes, this, um, how to say, yeah, the triplet term usually um, is related to the uh, turbulence is super riding, right? Um, maybe um, it's uh, how to say related to the non local yeah, stuff because here actually we um, did need to consider the two space of scale. So, but uh, how to directly uh, to relate the uh, spreading, um, I haven't, yeah, have the idea. Let me pick up on that question mm -hmm. since one, I mean, there are experiments relating, trying to get at the question of blob emissions, in other words, strong mm -hmm. turbulent events at the edge mm -hmm. and its effect on rotation. I think, um, I mean, you might want to comment on those. 
Because this, this so, isn't so fanciful, right? Well, yeah, yeah. From the experiment, yes, they, uh, they showed um, when the blob um, is generated and uh, um, the nonlinear flux is quite important. I think you guys from other areas could translate blob as plume, as how you say plume in plasma problems in simple, simple terms. Oscar. Uh, can you predict the direction of acceleration from the form of your nonlinear? Like, uh, would it rotate this way or this way? I see. Uh, it depends on the, how to say the um, the gradient of the uh, turbulence intensity. Uh, yeah, mm. if the gradient like this or this, the the driving force will be yeah opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The can't we relate to the uh, uh, first problem? And uh, the question is, well, what determines the 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 scale, the zone scale of the flow is generated. I mean, since you said that the asymmetry is not, asymmetry in the spectrum is not necessary. Mm -hmm. What the zonal scale, the zonal scale is generated, what determines that? But you mean the scale of the zonal flow? Yes. Yeah. Uh, actually, here, the zonal flow scale. Um, the zonal flow scale is determined by the how to say the the bit, the bit mode of the uh, small scale turbulence. You mean you mean the envelope structure like that? The envelope of the uh, turbulence, uh, how to say, will set the force, the how strong of the flow, and not the scale of the flow. <coughs> but does, that doesn't the, I mean, the envelope can have some some structure which can uh, can. Not only, like, like you said, it determines the mm -hmm. direction of the flow that generated. So how? So maybe it all can also determine the zonal scale you uh, you obtain, which means there is ultimately uh, the uh, the asymmetry mm -hmm. uh, happens in the envelope. The asymmetry of the flow yeah, the, the uh -huh. asymmetric of the envelope. Uh -huh. uh, what, what, what I mean, the asymmetry of uh, the asymmetric turbulence spectrum is not required, which means that in k space, in k space, um, the asym like the ID uh, tilting it is not required. But uh, we do need this you can see here uh, the how to say the gradient of the uh, nonlinear flux we need that it cannot be uniform flux if the flux is uniform in radial direction then there will be no uh, nonlinear force Okay, yeah. you, you consider the adiabatic uh, case, which is, of course, uh, perfectly fine, but one, uh, since you uh, apply that to the edge, one could argue that actually the dominant term is the one you dropped in the sense that it's the, uh, the particle transport, which will be uh, a massive <coughs> the convection of, uh, of matter, which will be uh, actually the exposure. And if you were to, to put your typical time as, I don't know, say uh, the zonal flow damping time and your fluxes becoming the, uh, 
the particle of SOX, would you still, how, how, how would you estimate your flow of SOX? Would it be uh, on par with the, the quasi-linear, with the, what you compute as non-linear, or would it be even more non-linear? Uh, you, you mean if the, uh, how to say, the adiabatic approximation it is relaxed? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, maybe if you go back uh -huh. some... Yeah. Yes. Yeah, in that way, maybe we need to compute the particle flux as you yeah, mentioned as well by Oscar. You, you mean this one, right? Yeah, but if you go uh, uh, well, back? higher in the slide, yeah. you do after, 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 the next one I think, yeah, uh, no, this one, yeah. If you, here you, you take, for instance, tau c as your nonlinear time. Mm -hmm. And you investigate in this way. That's, that's what, what you do, you just wait for some time. But if you want mm -hmm. to take tau c as the inverse, for instance, of your flow damping, which plays a, ma a major role, and your mm -hmm. fluxes being the particle fluxes, what kind of uh, momentum flux would you get in the end? Because that is probably a very dominant uh, term. But here, um, when we calculate this uh, tau c, um, this one, this equation is just uh, from the, how to say, the closure of the hasegawa mima equation, which is, um, yeah, which is of course related to the, how to say, the adiabatic approximation, right? And uh, then, if we want to get rid of the adiabatic approximation. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe um, this guy will be modified. Well, we, we can discuss, but you, you can play the game based on dimensional analysis, not exactly on that relation, mm -hmm. because here it's, it's based on the average of anima. So it would be good, but I'm trying to, to, to say, but since you will have you, you have the structure of the fluxes which you know, you can play differently with your different correlation times and fluxes, mm -hmm. and, uh, and and then it would be interesting not to drop the particle flux and to take your correlation times as you know, say the the collisional damping of of your flow in the edge or something like that. Mm -hmm. I can get a comment in here. I'm, I don't know why you, you go for the flow damping as the time scale. Because you, you go to non adiabatic, you go to Hasegawa Wakatani. I mean, the fastest rate is at alpha equal one, which will give you the wave frequency as, as the dominant rate, for, you know, for right in between the adiabatic and the hydrodynamic limit. So that would be a maximum you know, rate coefficient to put there rather than the flow damping. Yeah, but the, the flow damping, it would, be, it would give you a minimum, and then you can always have, that, that would be your minimal state, and anything real estate would be larger than that. So yeah, I mean, but I think if you work in, in Hasegawa Wakatani, you can look at the real, go to the realistic thing directly. You don't have to mess around with that. Yeah. Certainly true in density limit regimes, it goes to the hydrodynamic, you know, limit. Yeah, maybe, you know, as you said, working in the, how to say, hasegawa Wakatani uh, system may be more consistent with the strong uh, turbulence limit. Right? So a lot yeah. more algebra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? All right, let's thank Lou again.